one of the reasons I titled this talk Being a Human is because I was very inspired by G.I. Gurdjieff. G.I. Gurdjieff in the early 1920s was a mystic, and he talked about how in order to be human, we had to be firing in all three centers of our intelligence. We often know about the intellectual center, and we've heard about the emotional center, but there's also the intuitive center. And what he says is that you have to be firing on all three of those in order to be considered a human. When I was asked what I wanted to be when I was a child, artist was never one of the options. It was typically followed up with, how are you going to make a living? Or how would you go to school? You're really not that talented as an artist. And then it would be followed by the why. I don't know how you're gonna get a job and contribute to society. How are you gonna buy a car, a house, or a boat? And often people were really focused on power, prestige, and possessions, things that I really wasn't interested in. None of those things met my why. In 2009, Simon Sinek hit the TED stage with the golden circle. He helped me understand that it wasn't about the what, how, and why in that order. It was best to start with the why, and then the how, and then the what. When starting with the why, I really had to ask myself, what is it that I really love about creating art? And why do I love doing this? When I'm creating art, I find myself in the flow state a state of time passing. And when we are in the flow state, time does disappear. We experience joy, meaning, and we have a sense of purpose. So for me, my why was really about living a life of meaning and purpose. So let's just define meaning. It can be defined in many different ways. Just do a quick googly. But a sense of connection to something bigger than myself was a key factor of that definition. Purpose was the reason why I like to get up in the morning and get going. So these things contributed to my why. So let's move on to the how. How do we live a life of meaning and purpose? How will we know if we are successful? Well, I think we first have to define success. So for me, the definition of success is taking a look at the things that I love to do and examining why I love to do them. So for example, I love all forms of art. So if I distill down that love, it's really about creativity. I also love traveling. And one of the things I love so much about traveling is I have a great sense of adventure and I like to go on adventures. And I love connecting with friends. So for me, my definition of success includes intimacy. So here's three definitions, and I have many more in my definition of success of creativity and venture and intimacy to show you an example of how I identified some of the areas of my definition. How I've lived a life of meaning and purpose is by focusing on the things that I love creativity, adventure, and doing them with others. So that covers the why and the how part. So let's move on to the what. What is going to bring my life meaning and purpose? What is going to bring me success as I define it? Here's an example of my company's why, how, and what. Since I'm the founder of Nun Design, I had to ask myself, why am I here? There's me. My why when I was a child is I loved being in nature. I loved going on adventures and I loved having friends. I loved organizing others. The days pass by so quickly. Why? And I loved spending time making things. I was in the flow state. Why I got up in the morning was pretty simple. I love to go out and play and have fun. My why gave me meaning and purpose. How did I get to where I am now? I had hobbies, jobs, I developed a career, and I grew it into a vocation. Elizabeth Gilbert 
took the TED Talk stage with this concept. For myself, I had lots of hobbies and I played as a child collecting stamps and coins. I built things, I loved to read, I play and ran about. And then as I grew up, I started jobs. I had paper out, a beauty shop. I worked at a beauty shop, a law firm, an accounting firm. As I got older, I took a gap year in between college and I traveled for a year in Europe. I then went to a four year art school to study graphic design. I had a job at the school office and this paid for my tuition so I could graduate with no debt. After I was done, I started a career as a freelancer and then I started my first company where I designed and sold t-shirts. I started my second company at age 26 designing stationery from recycled prep paper. And then it wasn't until I was 33 that I started Nun Design. I really felt like I had found my vocation. It incorporated all the elements of my definition of success. The mission at Nun Design is through collaborative relationships, Nun Design inspires and nurtures creativity. This is our company's why, and it incorporated all of the things from my childhood that I love to do. So how? How do we inspire and nurture creativity? We do this through our website, through photography, through our blog, through our education, through product development, marketing and design, and by supporting other artists. We also do trade shows. So our what is about a lifestyle. We sell a lifestyle, we sell a dream. What wisdom can I give to those who are starting on this creative path? What advice? I would suggest the most important thing you can do is to truly know yourself. Know why you do what you do and why you love doing it. How do these things bring you meaning and purpose? How do you define success? I also suggest that you find a mentor and always believe in the world of possibilities.